Okay, welcome back to Advanced Accounting 2, Intercompany Transactions. This is a big week, and we are going to be covering all of the remaining examinable topics, which are intercompany transactions. Why did I say examinable? Well, because there are as many, quote, intercompany transactions as there are transactions. The thing that makes them intercompany is when they occur between a parent and a sub. So let's think back to our much earlier visual of the water bottle. When you have a company which controls another company, it, as if, it is as if they are both arms of the same body. Let's take my body. Say I have a water bottle in my left hand and my left hand's income statement is underperforming. Can my left hand sell my right hand the water bottle for $10 more than it purchased it for and call that profit to boost their financial position? Perhaps you might say that's okay. Well, what about $100 more than it purchased it for? A thousand? A million? Hopefully at some point I have you shouting no at the screen, angry at my escalation. You cannot do that. The thing is, the principle in play remains the same. I cannot generate profits by selling something to myself. Similarly, I cannot generate losses by selling something to myself. Sure, I transferred something from my left hand to my right hand, and the financial statements for each entity, my left hand financial statements, my right hand entity-specific financial statements, will communicate that transaction. But when I consolidate the financial statements for my body, that is uh, the thing that controls both the left and the right hand, I need to eliminate any interbody, intercompany transactions. I can realize this transaction only once uh, they are either sold to a third party or consumed by the entity. In both instances, we can say that would be flushed through the income statement. Just make sure that when you use that term, you consider that this is a term I just made up, uh, similar to negative assets when we discuss liabilities. It's not wrong. In fact, it's quite right. It's just not necessarily terms you commonly use with other accountants or other accounting educators. Alrighty. So when we have a company which controls another and then rolls forward a few years, and I'm, quote, recreating the opening balance sheet, I also need to eliminate any unrealized profit. That is, not sold to any third parties, uh, anyone outside of my left or right arms, outside of my body. This can get confusing, so I'm going to ask you to take notes, rewatch these short mini lecture videos, perhaps a few times, um, but not necessarily in order. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, you know, go through, you know, watch these first one time, and you know, try to get kind of enough of enough of them. Um, and then as you're going through the tutorials, as you're going through your um, your assignments, as you're going through and using these, if something's a little bit tricky, come back. Come back, look at the theory. Uh, if you prefer the textbook, do that. Uh, ask a friend, email me, uh, you know, go back to your notes and build up. So remember, learning is repeated exposure to same or similar materials. These videos act as a foundation but you need to build upon this foundation with practice. Your, um, I also want to suggest do this in little bits. Please do not try to settle in and cram this out. Meaning, don't try to sit down, watch all the videos, uh, do the assignment, and one in one, you know, foul swoop, um, you know, and just try to cram through everything. Then you know, right before it's due. Um, and that is part of working smarter, not harder. Uh, not just because it's a thing that profs tend to say. Uh, people, your brain is sneaky and it likes working while you sleep or while you do other things. So let it. Okay. Intercompany transactions. Topic one, elimination entries, revenues, and expenses. The consolidated income statement should only show transactions with entities outside of the group of companies. So again, think about intercompany sales and purchases, like moving money from one pocket to another or a water bottle from one hand to another. There is no real impact to your overall financial statement. Eliminating intercompany sales, and similarly, eliminating intercompany purchases, won't change net income. 
elimination is required so that revenue and expenses are not overstated in the consolidated financial statements. We have some very specific intercompany transactions when it has to do with intercompany sales and purchases. Uh, they can be notes payables uh, and receivables where we need to eliminate interest expense and interest revenues as there um, is an asset and a liability on the balance sheet. We also need to look at intercompany management fees, which is a common method of repaying costs shared between parent uh, and sub companies. And we need to eliminate uh, the related revenues and expenses. Uh, intercompany rentals, so similar to above, eliminate revenues and expenses. And we will get into you know, the specific debits and credits for how to eliminate, but I think intuitively you know. So if you have a revenue that's overstated, and you have an expense that's overstated, well, that means you need to decrease revenues. How would you do that? With the debit. And if expenses are overstated um, by equal but opposite amounts, what would you do? Well, to reduce an expense, you'd credit it. So we're going to debit revenues, credit expenses, and that's your elimination entry when talking strictly about the intercompany uh, sales and uh, purchases. So relatively simple. Same thing when you're looking at intercompany notes payable and receivable. Uh, your receivables would be overstated and in opposite directions when you squish the two companies' financial statements together, your notes payable would be overstated. How do you reduce a receivable? You credit it. How do you reduce a notes payable? You debit it. So there we have just eliminated that intercompany notes payable and receivable. Okay, question time. Company A is the parent company, parent of company B. Which of the following transactions should not be eliminated in the consolidated financial statements? Is it A, interest recorded on a note B issued to A? B, a paid rent on land leased from B? C, a sold inventory that was originally purchased from B to a third party? Or B, or, pardon me, or D, B declared dividends. What do you think it is? Well, if you said C, uh, A sold inventory that was originally purchased from B to a third party, that would be correct. This is a transaction that should not be eliminated. And this is because it's the only transaction that involved a company outside of the group. So it was, you know, as if the water bottle was subsequently sold, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to a um, to another another set of arms or legs um, outside of my body. So you know, left hand, right hand, um, one entity, and then when it goes outside, then we can um, realize it. And when the transaction is outside, then we um, don't need to eliminate it. And if you're trying to say, well, I need to do, you know, I need to eliminate the from A to B. Um, even though it went from B to unrelated? Uh, the answer is no, because if you work through the transactions and you take a peek, um, it, A would just have had its, um, on the consolidated entity, any kind of fake profits that were on A's financial statements would be equal and opposite to the cost of goods sold increase on B's entity specific uh, financial statements. So those, uh, those crush each other out because that's what happens when um, it's sold to a third party is the cogs are realized. So then you really only have the original items. You have the water bottle that was purchased um, on A's financial statements that become your cost of goods sold and the revenues on B's financial statements when it sells to an unrelated third party. So we can dial it back and say, cool, when it's finally sold to a third party, then um, we don't need to eliminate and it flushes through the system and there's nothing um, nothing left to do. Okay, awesome work guys. Um, the rest of the videos are relatively, like I said, short but meaty and jam-packed. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.